guys, so I am back from my volunteering adventure, um, two weeks in Toronto without Wi-Fi, and, like any steady Wi-Fi, and without my computer, and without actually filming anything, and guys, I read 19 books, which is a lot. Um, having no Wi-Fi really opened my eyes to how much time I'm distracted by other things like, you know, watching YouTube videos, sitting around on Tumblr, watching Netflix. Um, so it was kind of great to get through so many books, um, but now this means I have a ton of videos to make for you guys, which I'm going to be splitting the reviews up into four parts. Um, there will be five books in each video simply because that's a lot of books to talk about and I don't want these videos to get too, too long. Um, so yeah, so today I will be giving you the first five, including a book I finished before I went away. And that book is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Um, I actually finished this the night before I left. I finished it during intermission of As You Like It, um, which I saw the night before I left because some friends were in it and I really wanted to see it. Um, yes, I quite like this book. It reminded me a bit of Sylvia Plath, not Sylvia Plath, Sylvia Plath is the author of this book. Shirley Jackson's The Bird's Nest in that it deals with a young girl's slow descent into madness. Um, when we first meet Esser, who is the main character of this, she is in New York City and she is, it's like a bright young thing kind of vibe that you're getting from it. Um, a bunch of young girls from university have been selected and they have been taken to New York City where they are basically, you know, at do a bunch of things for this magazine to give them experience um, and then when that's done we go back to her university days and her time at home um, and her eventual like slip into madness and it's quite good. Um, I really enjoyed this a lot. I, I don't really have words for it but if you are a fan of Shirley Jackson, I would definitely recommend this if you haven't read it already. I know it's one of those ones that like people talk about all the time. I hadn't gotten around to it, so I was glad to finish it. Next up is one who, actually most of this is authors who are new to me. Um, There's only one that I have read in this review selection, and that is Toni Morrison's Beloved. Um, I have never read a Toni Morrison book. I didn't really know what to expect going into it other than people really enjoy her works, people find her works to be emotionally moving. Um, this tells the story of Seth who is a slave and her um, escape into freedom and some of the consequences dealing with that. I don't want to go into too much detail because uh, I don't want to give anything away. Um, I know a lot of people have read this and know what I'm talking about but I didn't know anything going into this and that I think improved my enjoyment of the work. Um, there are some gothic elements that I found to be a bit heavy-handed in it um, and that kind of <sighs> took away a bit from some of my enjoyment. I know a lot of people really love this book so I'm hesitant to be super super critical of it um, but yeah some of the gothic elements in it just didn't do it for me so I think I gave this like three stars, which is still a good review. It means I still enjoyed it. Um, five stars is like amazing for me, like completely blew me out of the water. Four stars is like, wow, this was friggin' fantastic. And three stars is, it was good. I enjoyed it. I have nothing really negative to say about this other than the gothicness was a bit heavy handed. Um, I didn't have the emotional connection that a lot of people seem to have. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I can really say about this book. Um, next up is Flannery O'Connor's Wise Blood. Um, I've been told by a lot of people to read Flannery O'Connor. Um, I, I didn't love this book. I think I maybe didn't choose well for my first Flannery O'Connor though. That, that could be it. Um, this tells the story of Hazel Motes and his creation of The Church Without God. Um, well, it is enjoyable. It was, you know, a bit... <sighs> I found the pacing very slow and I mean, this is coming from somebody who reads a lot of 18th century lit. I found the pacing slow. I found the character development to be frustrating. Um, I didn't, yeah, I just didn't didn't connect with this in the way that I'd hoped to. I'm still gonna give Flannery O'Connor a chance, especially when it's a big author like this. I do tend to give them at least another work um, to kind of like, when people talk about it and they're like, oh my god, this author is amazing, and you're like, I'm just not connecting, I will give it at least two works. Um, but yeah, this was, this was okay. Like, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't great. Um, next up is Shirley Jackson's 
Life Among Savages, which is a slightly fictionalized memoir of her life in the 1950s as a housewife um, slash author. Um, this is quite different from her other works. Um, it's very humorous, which is interesting. Um, and at first I was like, I don't know how I'm feeling about this. It's kind of, it's not, it's not creepy. It's not gothic. It's not, you know, subverting the patriarchy the way that Jackson's works do. Um, and so I was talking to my friend and she sent me a couple articles, like scholarly articles about the subversiveness of her works like of this kind of work of Jackson's and it started to make more sense and I started to pay more attention when I was reading and I quite enjoyed this in the end. Um, I still prefer her fiction to this but I am looking forward to reading Raising Demons. Um, yeah, I, I would recommend this if you are a hardcore Jackson fan. I wouldn't recommend this if you're picking up Jackson for the first time. Do not pick this up for your first Jackson. But it is good if you are running out of Jackson to read and you want some more. This is quite humorous. Um, it's a little bit subversive. You just have to look. You just have to look with this one. Um, the last one I read is The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Apparently this is like really well known and quite popular and like while well, I'd heard about it before reading it. I'd heard about it in an American lit course at uni, so I think it's like an American thing where it's super popular in America, but it's not elsewhere. Um, people in other countries other than Canada, tell me if this is really popular and if you're forced to read this for school. Um, yeah, this tells the story of Hester Prynne and her daughter Pearl, and basically Hester Prynne goes around wearing a big A on her chest because she is married, her husband is still in... Um, Europe and she is in a puritanical society in America and she has a baby. So clearly she was an adulteress, that's what the A stands for. Um, and it basically takes a good hard look at society. Um, some of the things I didn't like about this, the witches, they're like, this is puritan society. So they have this old woman and she's like, oh, the black man or whatever, the, whatever she called the, um, the devil, I think the black man was one of them, um, her, her master or whatever, she would constantly be calling out to people to join her in the woods and I'm like, it's not, it's not historically accurate and that bothered me a lot. Um, people didn't, like, it just, you know, don't get me started on the Salem Witch Trials and how stupid puritanical society was because of that. Ugh. That just, that drove me mental in this. This was still a good book. I was able to set that aside. Didn't completely ruin my reading experience. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, it's it's American lit, so it's all right. But yeah, those are the five books, the first five books that I read when I was away. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. These are all books that I also brought with me, um, except for the bell jar, obviously. Um, so next I'll be starting to get into books that I bought while I was there. Um, I'm not going to do a haul video for this, but just because I read pretty much everything that I bought, so there's no point because I'm going to be talking about them. I might as well not talk about them twice, but I will tell you if I bought them in Toronto in future videos, and I'll see you later. Bye!